Hello info person, this is Anton, and today we're going to discuss a relatively new discovery coming from, I guess you would call it, Cosmic Neighborhood. A discovery of yet another terrestrial planet, but this time super super close to us. A planet around a very famous star known as the Barnard Star that's technically one of the closest objects to the solar system. And so let's talk about this in a little bit more detail. But here first, let's talk about why this is actually a super exciting discovery for a lot of astronomers out there. And that's despite the fact that thousands of planets have already been confirmed and a lot more exciting planets have been discovered in a lot of other star systems. And so here, let's start with a bit of a history. And I guess let's start with the name first. Why Barnard Star? Well, it's named after this guy, Edward Emerson Barnard, uh, Barnard, I don't know, it's one of those names I've only read, never heard pronounced by anyone, so I'm going to assume Barnard. An American astronomer who back in 1916, or essentially 108 years ago, discovered an unusual star moving really fast in the night skies. Or at least fast compared to other stars. It basically had a relatively high proper motion, moving laterally at 90 km per second. And because he was the first to discover this, and because this was actually before any star naming convention existed, this somewhat dim red dwarf eventually became known as the Barnard Star. And because this guy was pretty prolific in discovering other things, he actually has a bunch of other objects named after him, even a galaxy. But one of the main reasons why this star was actually kind of exciting for a very long time is really because of its distance to us. This is, as I mentioned, one of the closest objects to us. Now Proxima Centauri is a little bit closer, Alpha Centauri as well, but then we have the Barnard star. Currently, it's only about 5.96 light years away from us, and it's essentially one of the closest objects ever discovered. Intriguingly, it was even discovered before Proxima Centauri. But both Proxima Centauri and Barnard star represent the closest red dwarfs to us. And as you might already know from some of the older videos, one of which is in the description, a while back two separate planets have been officially confirmed around Proxima Centauri. One of these planets is extremely similar to Earth in terms of size and mass and is also in the habitable zone. And so because of that discovery of Proxima b, and because of previous studies suggesting that many red dwarfs should have planets in habitable zones, the next obvious target has always been Barnard Star, more officially known as Proxima of Firekai, which led to an extensive search in the last few decades. And there was actually one important reason why Barnard Star was a little bit more exciting than Proxima Centauri. Proxima Centauri is what's known as a flare star. It's basically a red dwarf that's still kind of active and tends to produce massive flares, emitting a lot of X-ray and ultraviolet radiation that within just a few million years can actually strip any atmosphere and destroy any liquid water on pretty much any planet. And it just so happens that many red dwarfs turn out to be this. They're just a little bit too active for any life to survive on the surface. But when studying Barnard Star, researchers discovered that it seems to spin really slow and thus its age is much higher. In other words, Barnard Star was potentially much calmer. And because its age was established to be 7 to 12 billion years, and because it was one of the older red dwarfs out there, it was assumed to be calm enough to potentially have hospitable conditions for terrestrial planets. But there were two problems. First problem was that initially no planets have been discovered here. And a second problem came in 1998. Despite being an ancient star, it experienced a massive stellar flare detected in 1998. And once this flare was discovered, the star officially became a flare star as well. With all this confirmed in 2019, when two additional ultraviolet flares were detected as well, with a total energy release being much much higher than anything our sun produces during a typical very active stage. And so by observing these flares, researchers eventually calculated that a typical planet orbiting around the star would probably lose one Earth atmosphere every 10 million years. Which obviously suggested that this was not a star for habitable planets. But still, researchers wanted to find something, anything. Basically, where are all the planets? And the thing is, since the early 1960s, there have been a lot of arguments for the existence of planets in the system, specifically gas giants. And so actually, as early as 1970s, several astronomers, including Peter van de Kamp, argued for the existence of some kind of a gas giant that was potentially detected using initial observations. 
but here this was detected by using extremely early and very inaccurate techniques using what's known as astrometry, or basically observing tiny deviations in motions of a star as it travels across the night skies. But back in the 60s and the 70s, astrometry was at its infancy and was basically very inaccurate. And so it didn't take long to basically disprove this idea, eventually proving that there was no gas giant here at all and the star was not wobbling as much as initially assumed. Here's actually a really cool image showing us how the star compares in terms of size to Jupiter and to our Sun. But then, in November of 2018, a new study using new techniques revealed a potential super-Earth, or basically a planet a little bit more massive and a little bit larger than planet Earth, orbiting at 0.4 AU away from the star. And here this was detected by using a different technique known as radial velocity. Essentially by observing the wobble of the star, but this time through the observations of the redshift and the blue shift coming from the starlight itself. But turns out that these observations were maybe not precise either. Because by 2021, or approximately three years later, this signal was discovered to be not coming from the planet, but very likely from the stellar activity and just from the star itself changing in color by just a little bit. So basically it seemed to be some kind of a variable star effect and not really a planet at all. This is not the first time such a discovery has been made, and not the first time the variability of a star fooled us into thinking it was a planet, with additional studies in 2022 confirming that this was not a planet after all. And so basically, in the last five decades, lots and lots of papers came out trying to find something here and discovered absolutely nothing. And this was super unusual because, as I mentioned previously, modern theories predict at least a few terrestrial planets around most red dwarfs. So what's exactly happening here? And interestingly, in the last decade or so, a lot of detailed observations revealed that there was possibly nothing here as far away from the star as a thousand day orbit. At least nothing comparable to planet Earth or larger in mass. And there was definitely nothing in the habitable zone that could have been similar to planet Earth like in the Proxima Centauri system. And then, a few hours ago from when I'm making this video, I got an email saying, attention, embargo, don't talk about this until uh, today basically. And that's because something finally has been discovered here, but we were not supposed to talk about it until now. And so let's talk about this new discovery that seems to be super official and definitely there, because in this case the actual evidence seems to be very strong. Now usually when I get these embargo emails from the European Southern Observatory, it's because something big has been discovered and they just want all of the press to talk about this at the same time. And normally you can actually get these emails yourself if you subscribe to their newsletter. But this time it was really the study itself and the amount of data included in the study that was kind of exciting. Now as always you can find the study in the description below, but here the title says it all. A sub-Earth mass planet orbiting Barnard star. Discovered using ESO's extremely accurate and very precise Espresso instrument and HARPS instruments in the La Silla Observatory. And one thing these instruments do really well is basically this. They can do radial velocity with absolutely unprecedented accuracy. In other words, they show us how something wobbles around something else by observing redshifts and blue shifts, but this time with accuracy we never had before. And these instruments are relatively new, they've only been operational for a few years, but we know their accuracy is very high. And well, this time the focus was Barnard Star, because here astronomers just really wanted to find something, anything. I mean like, please, because it just doesn't make sense that there would be nothing here. And well, Eureka, there was something after all. And the reason it was invisible before was because it was just not massive enough. It is a terrestrial planet, but as the title suggests, it's a sub-Earth planet. And so here, by looking at signals from the habitable and the temperate zone of the Barnard star, they discovered and then confirmed a planet very, very close to the star. A planet that orbits every 3.15 days and very likely has a temperature of about 125 Celsius. So definitely hot and definitely too close for any habitable conditions, but still super exciting. And actually exciting for maybe one more reason. This seems to be one of the lowest mass terrestrial planets ever discovered, with a mass equivalent to approximately half the Venus. And specifically approximately 0.37 masses of planet Earth, which is surprisingly three times the mass of Mars. And it seems to have a perfectly circular orbit, visible in the way the star wobbles. But obviously because it's so close to the star, 
It's unlikely to have any atmosphere and unlikely to have habitable conditions. But still, we finally found one planet here, and it's, as predicted, a terrestrial planet. But what's even more interesting, this new data suggests that there might be actually three more planets hiding somewhere in the vicinity. Specifically orbiting slightly farther away would maybe a period of 4 days, 2.3 days, and 6.7 days, with additional planets potentially being even smaller. And so in other words, one of the explanations for why no planets have been discovered previously is because they seem to be kind of tiny. Much smaller than Venus, a little bit bigger than Mars, and basically Mars and Mercury-like in appearance and potentially surface conditions. And so along with the discovery of Proxima V and Proxima D, this once again confirms that there seem to be a lot of terrestrial planets near us, and quite a few of them are very similar to what we have in the solar system. Although in this case, in this particular study, they once again also confirmed that there seem to be no gas giants and no additional super-Earths as initially reported in previous studies from 2018 and from 1970s. And because here the observations were ultra-accurate, it's extremely unlikely that this is a mistake. But I guess only time will tell what else we discover in this system, and more importantly, what sort of planets these are, what's on their surface, and if any of them contain conditions necessary for life to survive. And so until future discoveries, and I guess until future observations with telescopes like maybe the James Webb, that's all I wanted to mention. Check out previous videos in the description below. Thank you for watching. Subscribe. Share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences. Come back tomorrow to learn something else. Support this channel on Patreon by joining channel membership or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful. I'll see you tomorrow. And as always, bye-bye.